Hello again, everyone. Uh, my name is Aaron Paxson. I uh, blog uh, at uh, mytaneo.net. I'm on Twitter as at Neelix. And I wanted to talk to you about using Ansible and Juniper devices together. Uh, more specifically in this course, we're going to be talking about deploying configurations to Juniper using Ansible. Now, why on earth would we want to use Ansible for NetOps? I mean, everybody's heard of uh, Ansible using DevOps and for system operations, cloud operations, provisioning new devices, and going out there for Amazon EC2. And why on earth would we want to use Ansible for network operations? Well, first and foremost, it is an automation framework. We can automate all those common mundane changes. If we have to make the same change to multiple devices all at the same time, why not automate that? Uh, provisioning lots of new boxes. If you just got a box, uh, a new device out of a box, and let's say you got maybe a dozen of them because you're setting up either a new data center or you're setting up a new wiring closet or whatnot, and it takes a lot of time for you to put an IP address on every single one of those and deploy a configuration out, why not have uh, a system that will automate it for you? Other ideas that for verification, uh, let's say we're you know putting up a new office network and we want to make sure that all the routes out there uh, all the routing protocols are updating those routes. and You want to have an automation system to go out there and verify that this route did actually get out to all the different routers out there. That takes a long time for most people to do, and most people just kind of hope to say, hey, well, I hope it works. It should work. It's always been working before. But now we can verify that. Uh, we can use skill delegation. So I can actually put in all the effort from at my level on architecting and designing how these devices should be configured, but then once I put it into a plan, it would be nice for me to just kind of hand it off to another technician and let them run it. And if there's a problem, then they can bring it back up to me. But if, if everything goes fine, hey, they can just keep on deploying it. Uh, so obviously, NetOps needs some automation love too. I mean, we can really do a lot of things for NetOps. So for this video, there's going to be a few assumptions. The first one is if you want to follow along with the demo, you don't have to have any of this to really watch the video. But if you want to follow along with the demo, uh, you need to have a basic knowledge of Ansible, you know, what a playbook is, what plays are. Um, we'll, you'll see it here in a second, but having a basic knowledge of it would really help. A basic knowledge of Junos would be helpful as well. Not required, but it would be really helpful. Uh, and if you want to follow along, a working installation of Ansible on your machine. So before we go on to automating Juniper devices, uh, because it's going to be a little bit different, first let's get a re quick review about what Ansible does. Now, the first thing that Ansible does is you have an Ansible control server. It's usually a Linux box out there that you just install Ansible. It's a very quick install, very, very small footprint. Uh, really, the only requirements, I believe, are mostly Python. Uh, I think it's like 2.6 or 2.7. Uh, you can have Python 2.5. You just have to install a, a JSON library. I'm not going to go into details about that. but um, So you have this Ansible control server, and it's really just a one server. And what makes Ansible so much different from all the other systems is that it's agentless. It actually pushes configurations and automation to the devices. It, uh, the devices don't pull from it from an agent. So you can really, as long as that device has SSH installed on it, hey, you're good to go. So the first thing that you do is using an Ansible module, a Python package is kind of put together. So let's say you're calling a module to deploy a configuration file. Well, when you run Ansible, it takes that module, packages it all up into Python, and then what happens is after it builds an SSH connection into those boxes, it delivers that Python module to all the devices that you've got it pointing to. Then after that, it basically gets executed on that device, whatever the module is, deploying it, that kind of thing. And then after that, using JSON, it actually talks back to the Ansible control server. That way you know if it actually worked or not, what completed, what didn't complete it, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's how basic Ansible works. And the great news is, is that once that module is done, it's gone off that system. There's no residual effects on that system. It runs it, returns back the results, and clears it out. Now there's a little bit difference between what Ansible does for most of the Linux boxes than with Juniper. So with Juniper, what it does is it basically packages everything up, but it's using netconf, the protocol netconf, to actually deliver those commands. So instead of delivering a Python module over to the box, it's basically putting everything together that it needs to inside of netconf. And then it actually talks to those devices using netconf over SSH. So it sends those commands over to the boxes. The boxes then go ahead and you know, accept those commands and do something with those commands. And then it returns the results back to the Ansible control server. So it's not really using Python uh, at the, it's using Python locally, but it's not really using Python at the remote end. So you don't have to install Python. So really the takeaway for the differences between 
the Juniper Ansible and regular Ansible operations is you don't need Python on the Juniper modules and that it's not the module that's executed on each device. It's really NetConf commands that are sent to it. Okay, we're going to talk about a little bit more about why that's important here in a second. So some uh, requirements, in order for your Ansible control server to be able to talk to Juniper, you do have to have a couple of requirements. It's super simple to put on there. The first thing you need to do is you need to install the Python library for NetConf. And that's, the Python library is called NC Client. And really, as long as you have PyPy installed, then you would just install pip, which is the PyPy installer, uh, pip install NC Client. Now, what I didn't show on this slide is it's showing a user level prompt with the dollar sign. Uh, if, you're, if you have a user level prompt, more than likely, if you're using a global Python environment, you're probably gonna need to do sudo on that. Uh, so if you do get an error message saying it could install the library, uh, do a sudo in front of it. Do sudo pip install NC client. That will install the Python library for NetConf. The second requirement is, is that you need to install Junos EZNC, and that's the Python library for Junos. So it actually can talk about talk to Juniper devices and knowing how to do certain things. So again, pip or sudo pip install junos-ezmc. Once you get the Python libraries ready, then the last thing that you really need to do is you need to turn on or you need to tell Ansible how to use the Juniper NetConf modules. So that's already been installed. Uh, Juniper has already installed a role inside of Ansible Galaxy. So if you already have Ansible installed on your machine, then you would just type in ansible-galaxy or sudo ansible-galaxy install juniper.junos. Uh, I do believe it is case sensitive, so I need to make sure that the username for Juniper is a capital J. And what that'll do is it'll install the role and it will also download the module at the same time so that Ansible will know how to access those devices. And the last thing is obviously for the Juniper devices, uh, they gotta be able to talk NetConf. And it's really just a simple one-liner. Uh, you would just type in set system services NetConf SSH. That's the basic default. You can, you can have NetConf be responding on other ports and everything. Right now, I'm just gonna be using it over SSH. So you turn on that, uh, that configuration, you do a commit on it, and then it's, it can actually talk NetConf. Now, actually, I wanted to talk about this real quick. I'm not going to be showing it in this slide, but what's really cool is uh, there is actually a Python library called Junos Netconify. And what that will do is using Ansible, you can actually have Ansible, instead of using SSH, using a console or a serial type configuration deployment. So instead of it using NetConf over SSH, because that, you know, if you're using NetConf, you basically already have to have SSH installed or set up for it. You gotta have an IP address on it. You gotta have a username on it. Those are all things that were done pre-deployment. But if you've got a box that's just brand new out of the box, how are you going to be able to automate that? And that's what the Netconify does. So Netconify is a library that you can use to either point it to a console terminal server, let's say Open Gear, right? Let's say you have a 32 port console server that uh, is plugging into all the console ports for your devices. You can actually point it to that and have it deploy the configuration through the console port that way or you can actually have it pointing to your local serial device. Let's say, you know, slash DEV slash TTY as USB or whatever. And if you've got a local serial device, you can actually deploy it locally as well. But we're not gonna be talking about that. That's really more optional. So a quick overview about the uh, Ansible Junos modules. So those are, these are the modules that you can actually call inside of Ansible for Juniper. You can do Junos get facts. That's really important, we'll talk about it here in a second. Uh, and Juno skip facts is really just, what's the operating version of it? Uh, what's the model of it? What's the serial number of it? Uh, gives you a few other uh, spe Juniper specific facts. Junos install config, that's what we'll be doing today with our demo, uh, how you can deploy configurations to it. You can install an OS to it. Uh, there are some caveats to that. There's, uh, you'll have to go online and take a look at the caveats. There's some virtual chassis that you can install the OS on and a few other caveats, but mostly if they're standalone boxes, you can pretty much expect that you can install the OS uh, through Ansible. Uh, shutdown or reboot using Juno shutdown and Juno zero eyes so that you can just wipe the box fresh clean as if it just came back, okay? Now, the demo. This is what everybody really cares about. This is really what you're watching the video for. So we're gonna talk about the config, we're gonna talk about the playbook, and we're actually going to do it. So let's talk about the config first. 
So the configuration that we're actually going to deploy to these routers uh, in my lab is going to be uh, set system, NTP server, and then the NTP server. Basically, I just want to deploy NTP to all my boxes. I don't have to do it one by one. Uh, the scenario would be if somebody were to sell you an NTP server and you are you just said, oh, I got to buy an NTC, NTP server because, well, you know, I don't like getting all that free stuff out there because they don't work for whatever reason. I don't know. Now you've got this NTP server, you gave it to your sysadmin, say install it, and you're, now you're like, okay, crap, now I got to put this to a hundred devices out there. How on earth am I going to do that? If I do that per box, hand by hand, it would take forever. So we're going to automate it. The types of configurations, something that's really important to know is, because <laughs> this really bit me when I was first deploying <laughs> my configurations for the Ansible Juniper module, if you are using set commands, you need to put the configuration file that you're deploying to it with a dot set extension. Uh, your configuration file, if it has a dot conf extension, it's going to expect the ASCII config or the curly braces config that you get when you do a show configuration or when you're in edit mode and you type in show. Uh, or if you're using XML configurations, you know, have the configuration file called dot XML. Now the playbook. So here's the playbook that we're deploying. You can see it's just really a few lines uh, and using YAML uh, in Ansible, it makes it pretty much human readable. I mean, for the most part, you can kind of go through here and know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so we're gonna go over a few lines that I wanna point out. The first one is, is note the role. So remember we installed the role juniper.junos using Ansible Galaxy. So we want to identify that this playbook is going to have the role of juniper.junos so that it knows to use those modules. Next thing is connection local. This is really important. If you remember when we were talking about the basic Ansible modules earlier on, that the module actually gets deployed to the device and the device actually runs that module, right? Well, here using the Juniper modules, we're not deploying a Python module to be executed on the device. It actually has to be executed on the local Ansible server. So that's why we're saying the connection is going to be local because we don't want the netconf Python modules to be loaded and executed on the remote devices. So it's actually going to be running locally on the Ansible server. Uh, gathering facts. So the thing is, because we're not executing Python, again, locally on the box, the gathering facts is basically a Python module from Ansible that runs. Well, again, we're not deploying the Python module there. So the gather facts is no. That's why uh, Juniper has actually created a gather facts for Juniper options inside the module itself because Ansible doesn't know how to get that those specific facts. So this is the module that we're going to be using. It's the Ansible module, Junos underscore install underscore config. Uh, the username, now this is not the SSH username. This is the username that you're actually going to be using on the Juniper devices themselves. Because if I'm using a username of technician, well, my permissions may not allow me to deploy these types of configurations out there. So this is the actual username that uh, you're going to be actually using to deploying inside the Juniper configuration. You'll notice that I don't have a password option here, and that's because I'm using public keys. But if I wasn't using SSH public keys, you would have to have a password in there as well. Uh, obviously, it's not best practices to be putting in a clear text password inside your playbook. My, com my recommendation would be either using a public SSH key or to be using uh, Ansible's ID Vault, which is encrypted. And then this is the configuration file that we're going to be deploying. Notice that I have the .set extension on there telling Ansible that I'm using set commands to deploy. Okay? And this is our environment. Basically have five routers, R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5, and we're going to be deploying a, that NTP config that we talked about earlier, that one line of code to point to an NTP server out on the internet. We're gonna apply it to all five of these routers. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the demo. Okay, we're now at the uh, demo aspect of it. The first thing that we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and install those dependencies uh, that we need to have Juniper run with uh, Ansible. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pip install nc client. Remember, this is the netconf client that we need for Python to be able to understand and how to build netconf.
Okay, now that that's been installed, next thing we want to do is we want to install Junos EZ in C. This is the Juniper Python library, and that's been installed. Finally, we want to install the Juniper role inside of Ansible so that Ansible knows how to talk uh, to Juniper. So we're going to say Ansible Galaxy install juniper.junos. Downloading the role, found the GitHub repository, downloaded it, extracted it, now we're good to go. So now we're in the directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the set-ntp.yaml file. One thing to know before I run Ansible is that down here, I've actually got R1 and R2 being monitored right now. i have actually monitoring a config file change syslog file. So as I'm deploying configurations, R1 and R2 should deploy the configurations as Ansible is running them. So we will say Ansible playbook set-ntp.yaml running the task. Oh, I guess I didn't rename the task. It still says deploy Ansible user. I'm reusing a task from before. Okay, so now it's ran. One thing I wanted to notice here, and I did this on purpose. You can see here that the R5 router right here says okay, but you can see that R1, R2, R3, and R4 all said change. And this is where the time adepotence actually shines. Sometimes it's actually more important to know if something changed than the actual change itself. So what I did was on R5, I already had that configuration already set up on Router 5. Router 5 was already using the NTP server. So it's actually saying that R5 was not changed. You can see here, changed equals zero for R5. But R4, R3, R2, and R1 were all changed. So you can see here, if I look at Router 1, you can see here that uh, the user Ansible did a set and it was system NTP server 66.228.54.198. Same thing with R2 right here. You can see that it actually ran this file, this system as well. So let's take a look to see if it's actually working. Show NTP status. And it's kind of hard to see, but let me go ahead and not gonna let me, there we go. Let's run this again so you can see a little bit more detail. You can see here that I'm now getting NTP status. So I hope this was informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing.